Fiat 127 was almost the definitive super mini. In 1982, it was replaced by the Uno, which rapidly became one of Europe's best-selling small cars. They've sold over four million examples. Well, now Uno's had a facelift, but like the new Metro, the changes are far more than just skin deep. The car comes with seven different power units, including a diesel. Three of them are derived from its big brother, the Tipo, as are the gearboxes. And there's also the option of the selector automatic transmission. There's no automatic metro yet. Only the shell and doors remain of the original Uno. All the other panels are new, designed by the same people who did the Tipo. Under the bonnet, great attention has been paid to cutting engine noise with special engine mounting blocks and sound absorbing panels. It's now got the best aerodynamics in its class. Inside, they've revised the dashboard and the heating and ventilation system is changed with automatic temperature control on some models, and that's a first for a small car. The new tailgate gives more usable boot room, the shelf is mounted higher, and with the seats folded, there's 34 cubic feet available for big loads. Now, when you first start to drive the new Uno, you, know, you think they've done something to the suspension to improve the ride, but in fact, it's exactly the same as the old model. What they have done is eliminate all the shakes and rattles of the old car coming from the seats and the dashboard and the fascia panel. It's all mounted in rubber. And it's all strapped down very tight. The result is the car feels and rides like a, a more expensive, heavier model. Uno has always had a good name for its handling and the lightness of its controls, making it an easy car to drive. But performance remains a major attraction. It's got a very Italian snarl through the gears. However, on our test car, the gear change could be quite awkward. The new car loses those odd paddle-type switches around the binnacle, and the controls are now on stalks, but it's difficult to find the shorter indicator lever until you're used to it. But overall, it remains a clean-cut, appealing package. So on the Uno 60, we like the space inside the car, the excellent handling, and the use of galvanised steel panels on the exterior there's very good access to the engine. We didn't like that rather bulky gear change, and on the subject of gears, you can't easily pull on the handbrake with reverse gear engaged. The pedal position is slightly odd, and there's no central locking on this model.